and I have someone special with me today. Um, we're doing a kind of impromptu interview. Um, now, the, the amazing woman that I'm introducing you today is Batgen Grossman, and I met her recently in a online networking event, and we connected. And when she shared with me her story and how she came to what she does and um, and also how she helps helps people. It was um, really resonated with me and I felt inspired to uh, share this message with the rest of you. So here we are. So Batgen Grossman has created a very unique method, a breakthrough method and systems to implement it that help God-centered women to create breakthroughs in their marriages and their relationships. And what really resonated with me, actually, is that, I mean, I've never, I wasn't raised as a churchgoer. Um, I have my own spiritual practice, but I'd never have thought of myself as a God-centered woman. But a lot of what Bat Ken shared with me is really resonated and feels to me to have much wider resonance and relevance for us as well especially at a time in the world when we're all wanting and needing more connection with others. So um, that's why we're talking today. Um, where she brings her clients to is to a place where their marriage is, is you know, the one that we dream of. <laughs> and, it's, and it's so hard to hold on to that. But we dream of that relationship that's filled with love, that is fulfilled where we can be aligned, where we can be connected with our spouse, with um, that person that we're spending our life with. And what I love about this is that, that it's about actually having some systems that we can practically implement. So welcome, Batgen. It's really, really lovely to have you on. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. I have to say, really, you said my name multiple times and you said it properly. And that's impressive. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's, it's, a person's name is really important, so I'm really pleased about that. Now, just oh, before wow. we dive into the interview, I will just say for anyone who's watching, this is something we've put together kind of at the last minute because we were inspired to do so. So you may be watching on the replay. If you are, just drop in the chat, hashtag replay, so that we know you're there. If you're watching live, that's even better. Um, well, it's neither, neither one's better, but it would be lovely to know if you're watching live. So again, just drop a comment in the chat. And either way, we'd love to know whereabouts you're watching from. So, you know, let us know in the comments where in the world you're from. So I'm here in New Zealand, but Ken is in Israel. We have, you know, people around the world who can tap into this. So do share that. And look, oh, let's, well. let's dive in. Now, one of the things that I'd like to start with is, you know, when, when we've met and you know had our initial conversations you shared with me a bit about your personal story and and how you came to do what you're doing now because this isn't really what you were always doing and maybe wasn't even an intentional path that you said hey I'm going to set a goal to to, to offer this service <laughs> would you like to share your journey with with those who are listening sure I love this so okay the way that I was raised is, mm. uh, you know, I'm a religious Jew, an Orthodox Jew. My father's a rabbi. My mother's a teacher. So we were always leaders in the community. We moved a lot because of it. You know, um, children of leaders tend to do that sometimes. <laughs> and uh, and I was really inspired by that. I saw my mother being a Rebbitzin as the word for mm. rabbi's wife. And people just flock to her to ask for questions. They used to drop in on a Sunday morning and change our whole plans with their dramas and things. And I saw what it was to help people and what it means to be, you know, the house of the rabbi. I grew up in it. So I wanted that for myself, right? You just, you're, you want what you're used to. Uh, so my first step was to get myself a rabbi to marry. <laughs> And so that was actually really funny because when I was 19, you know, all these ladies were like, what are you looking for? What type of guy? And I'd say, I want a rabbi. And they're like, you don't marry a profession. You marry a person. 
And I was like, no, then I guess you didn't understand what I'm looking for because I'm not looking for the profession rabbi. I'm looking for a person who lives their life with God and everything that they do. It's this like existence, right? Mm -hmm. Where every decision you make is based on your connection. Yeah. And I really, I, I was so clear on what I wanted. That was the first time I think that I actually manifested something that big, you know? <laughs> People were like, no, that's not what 19 year olds are supposed to be saying. And I was like, I don't know if you know me, but by now I'm probably 87. You know, like it, I just, my, my soul is one of those, you know, old and wise souls that I had to grow into because I always was like this. Yeah. And it was always awkward to be the wise one and the one that says the smart thing, you know, when everybody else wants to just make trouble. And so it was <laughs> yeah. difficult. It was difficult growing up. Um, so being with this vision I had that I wanted a rabbi, and I realized that at 19, I probably wasn't going to find one that was already there. You know, I was going to grow into it with him. So I also knew that I wanted to have a profession of my own so that I don't have to be dependent on, you know, being in that lifestyle of, you know, he, he is in his studies, I'm in my studies, and we have no money. So I wanted that at least I should have the ability to always have something to turn to, like a career. Yeah. And so very early on, right after high school, I went to Pratt Institute for Graphic Design in Manhattan. It's the top school. It's the top art school in, in America, I think. Um, it was the best experience I ever had yeah. to be in a place where there's high level people who are paying such high, you know, big, big money to be in a room that took you seriously. And mm -hmm. so instead of mm -hmm. cutting corners and being like, yeah, it's fine, just, you know, throw something together and send it to the client. It was like, you cannot send anything to a client that you will not put your name on. And there was this like, whew, fresh, you know, fresh air coming in. Like, I'm so happy. I'm around people mm -hmm. who really have that high, it almost felt like high consciousness about the thing that they were doing. Right, you know, right. it was intentional. It wasn't cheap. And I was really happy to be amongst them. I became a graphic designer. I worked on Fifth Avenue. I ended up getting married to my rabbi, who obviously was only in school for, you know, rabbinical studies. Hmm. And and then, you know, we had a baby, thank God, right away. Hmm. And we decided to come live in Israel because that was our dream. It was a joint dream. We, we had discussed it in, you know, while dating already. Thank God it worked out really well. And we end up in Israel and I realized I have to figure out how to stay on that high level graphic design thing because I just can't, I can't do things that are not, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a perfectionist. I'm like, I'm, <laughs> I'm a perfectionist. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, it's very difficult. So I worked for the top graphic designer in Jerusalem and it was an amazing experience. We did high level stuff. It was great. And yeah. with the time I had more kids and thank God my life changed and, you know, we moved a million times. So eventually I started my own business and I got my own clients and I started specializing in what I really wanted from the beginning while I was in Pratt, which was package design. And my favorite thing was designing packages of the same family. So like a whole line of things, mm -hmm. you know, it's like not just the shampoo, but the shampoo and the conditioner and the soap and whatever. Right. And like a line of socks, a line of, of whatever. Um, that was really fun. It was really great. And one of the things that you do in order to grow your business is you grow your network because that's how people know to send you clients. So I went to all these networking events and all these conferences, and I realized something really big. Mm -hmm. Everyone was holding themselves back. I mean, these are women conferences, okay? So when I say everyone, I'm not talking about the men. They're not even in the room. Yeah. All these women are holding themselves back from growing because it's going to make their marriage take pay a price. Yeah. They're going to have to pay something in order to grow. That was the 
overall feeling. It was mm -hmm. like, I want to grow, but not too big so that my marriage stays good so that I could still be home with the kids so that I can, you know, do my thing. And mm -hmm. there was this constant dance between I grew what I have to put myself back a little. Okay. Okay. <sighs> I can grow a little more, uh, you know, and there was this yeah. inching thing that felt really icky. And I was like, I just want to break through. Okay. <laughs> you know, yeah. there was uh -huh. this like, why are we doing this? Why are we yep. holding ourselves back? And of course, when I saw it and I'm a very smart and wise person, I was like, I must have seen it because I'm doing it myself. Mm -hmm. Where am I doing this? And I caught myself really resentful with my husband. It's your fault I'm not growing. It's your fault that I'm not making more money. It's because you're going to be jealous of me because I'm going to be too successful. And I'm going to be so successful. My kids won't have time to talk to me. And that's why I blah, blah, blah. And the biggest one was, and I'm going to lose my connection with God. Because when I'm wow. poor, then I have this direct line, like, God, I need food. God, I need stuff. God, I need clothing for my kids, right? There's this like direct line. So if I don't need that anymore, what am I going to do? How am I going to stay connected? Mm -hmm. That was my biggest fear. And once I brought all that stuff up and started working through it, of course, throughout all these things, I'm, you know, getting coached yeah. and learning coaching and doing all these things and podcasts were amazing. Yeah. And with time, I'm realizing that I myself am holding myself back, just like all those other ladies, and I'm going to break through. So I did in the graphic design realm. And then once I actually, you know, splashed that open and it started raining, then I got this really, really important message. <laughs> I was pregnant uh, with my number yeah. six. That was yeah. around four years ago. More, more like five. And I'm pregnant and I have this feeling that I can't do graphic design anymore. And I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. But I worked so hard and I finally made it, right? Yeah. And it's like, no, you need to do something else. So I was like, what? What is it? Um, and, you know, in, in, that, in that pregnancy, I realized that there was all these messages that were coming through that people said to me or that I read in books or whatever that postpartum pre uh, depression usually hits women who have multiple children because they're not expecting it. They think, fine. oh, don't worry. I could handle this. I've done this many times. Yeah. It's fine. So I was going to be, you know, <laughs> proactive about this, <laughs> which is my nature. And I'm like, I am not going to fall into any depression. I don't care if this is my number six. So I thought about what is it that I can do that will keep my head above water? Yep. And it was prayer. And this is something that, you know, I've been praying all my life, but in this direct line type of thing, like, hey, God, what's up? How you doing? You know, can you help me out here? That's that type of thing is very intuitive and it feels really good. Right. And it's mm -hmm. natural. Mm -hmm. Women have it naturally. You know, you just turn to God when you need something. Um, also, this is how I grew up a little bit. My father always used to do that all the time. He still does, probably. Um but I had a really hard time with the structured prayer because okay. I am, I was, I won't say I am. Um, I was not very good with time management, not very consistent. Anytime I try to take something upon myself to do regularly, I always failed. And prayer was one of those things that you were supposed to do daily. Yeah. And I was trying to do daily since high school. Okay. Okay. Since yeah. high school, I haven't been able to succeed. If they give me a structured time in school to, to pray, then I pray. But if yeah. I'm late, how am I going to make that up? I just lost the time. I'm late. I'm coming into the next classroom, right? I had such a hard time with, and then having kids. And it's like, you don't mm -hmm. have your own time anymore. Mm -hmm. You can't do anything. So oh, yeah. I decided that as much as I believe about myself that I'm not consistent, I am going to keep trying because this is important enough. And I decided that this was going to be the thing. This time I'm going to succeed. And I found bullet journaling, you know, with the little boxes mm -hmm. where you plug them in and yeah. you can't break the chain. Of course, I broke the chain many times. But what I realized was that because I'm a visual person, that was really helpful because I'm not living in the moment as much like oh man, I missed. Okay. I guess I'm a loser. I can't do this anymore. I'm a failure. I can't. 
Like every time I would lose yeah. one day, I would throw the whole thing out because I didn't have the visual thing to show yeah. me. Yeah. Actually, you've done three days in a row. Actually, yeah. you're already on day eight. You know, it was really hard. Yeah, that so, there is a great tip. I'm just going to pause you there because I know there are a lot of people out there who really struggle with this, um, how to build, and whether it's prayer, whether it's meditation, whether it's yoga, whether it's fitness, whether it's spending a few minutes with their spouse, whatever it is, there are there are those things that we say this is really, really important and it's surely it's not that hard. It just takes a few minutes. I'm going to do it every day. And then that's exactly what happens with most of us, right? Is that oh, yeah. we fall off the wagon. Ah, oh, this is just too hard. I'll try again next year, whatever. I'm just not the kind of person who can do it. So what right. you're sharing is that that the bullet journaling approach for you, because you could see the chain and you could see not just yesterday's whatever happened. Or today, you could see what you'd done before, and that helped you stay motivated to get back on the wagon. Is that what you're sharing? I, it brought to my attention how blinded I, I was mm -hmm. by the feelings I had in the moment. You know, Beautiful. oh, yeah. I forgot today and I forgot yesterday. It must be mm -hmm. that I'm just not good enough. I can't do this. Yeah. And then yeah. I would look at the paper and I'd be like, wait, you did two days a break of one day then eight days, then a break of two days, then five days. Why would you think mm -hmm. you should stop if most of that is black, not white? And then yeah. I, I would just, you know, it's it's staring you in the face. The truth is actually you have more than 50% success rate. That's a <laughs> Yeah, right? And then it's like, oh, yeah. look at that. You got eight days in a row. That means that you know, the biggest struggle, usually it's a Friday for me because Fridays yeah. here are hectic like crazy. Yeah. So usually a Friday would make me fall and I would have like, like six, mm -hmm. then off, six, mm -hmm. then off. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, and then if I got eight in a row, I would be like, look at that. You did it. You did it. Right. So I was able to use real facts to talk myself into continuing. That's hugely powerful. Thank you for that. And particularly good for all of you visual people out there. That's a real keeper, but good for all of us because it helps us to shift our perspective and not, as you say, get tied up in the emotional feedback of that moment, which is often oh, more yeah. helpful. So, yeah, yes, <laughs> thanks, exactly. thanks for allowing me to digress. So, so you, so you got that structure in place for yourself, and so, so yeah. baby number six. It's actually something I. It's something I teach in my in my retreat oh, for free yeah, because yeah. I think it's so yeah. powerful for everyone to have. Uh, baby number six, thank God she was born. She's yeah. delicious. Oh, yeah. so cute. Yeah. <laughs> They're so cute. Um, she's turning four soon. She wow. she was born and I continued praying. And yeah. that's that's a big huge thing because postpartum to actually keep any sort of anything yeah. Huge. is impressive. <laughs> so I, I remember I was in the hospital. I even prayed in the hospital. I made sure not to break the chain. I was so impressed with myself. Yeah. I was beyond. I just like, wow, who did you become? Right. That was like pretty impressive. But here's the thing. The side effect of that was even bigger because not only did I get to pray every day, but I actually got to speak to God and listen every single day. Mm -hmm. And so here I am already, I'm standing in prayer, right? Like you said, it's just a couple of minutes, not even five, right? It's like, it's very little time, but because I'm doing it every single day, I'm like, oh, hi God. So remember I was getting this feeling that I had to stop doing graphic design. What is it that you want? And I wasn't getting answers and I just kept asking. I'm like, so what do I, what do you want? Mm -hmm. And Eventually, I just remember saying, okay, listen, if I want to do your will and I have no idea what you want, then how am I supposed to know what I want? <laughs> right? Like, this is this is a loop. Like, if you don't let yeah. me know, then I won't be able to know. And then I can't do the thing that you want me to do. And that's yeah. when I finally started getting answers. I, I was just really, <laughs> I was a little pain. I was like, I am not giving up. Um, yeah. so I, I realized, you know what? I haven't been asking the right question. So I said, show me, show me what you want me to do. And that was, that was the that's secret. That's a great question. And again, anyone the, listening, that's a great note to take. So whether, whether you relate to you know, prayer to God or something else, um, 
for me it's uh, it's actually just different language same same right. entity same wisdom <laughs> exactly um you know but it's one of the things that's so important to me put out right that that affect right. how things come back to us i want to address what you said about you know the whole god thing here i am i'm jewish you're not most of the people who listen to me are all god-centered but it's not about religion observance the levels of things, you know, right? There's, I'm more religious than you. That was, that that game isn't happening. It's God-centered means that there is a core, a, a connective um, common denominator mm -hmm. that we all have. And this is the time, right? Like if any time, this is the time, time yeah. when we need to get rid of all those superficial layers of all those external labels and be like, yo, people, we are all here for the same reason. We are yeah. here to light up the world, right? We are here to light up the world. We are here for love and connection and growth and to live life. And we are exactly. all connected and whatever yes. framework. And that's what I really loved about our initial conversation too, is that if you boil it right down to the simple core of it, we're exactly. all in this together. We are. And, and it's, you know, in, in my retreat, one of the things we talk about is God baggage because yeah. <laughs> there is so much that we use in the name of God that separates us, mm -hmm. that makes us think we are, you know, superior, inferior, different. I don't know what, right? We all have mm -hmm. these things because we grew up in this world and this world's full of that mm -hmm. junk. So we're mm -hmm. all, we all have something, you know, you can't say, oh, don't worry, I'm all clean. We all believe <laughs> things about God that aren't necessarily God, right? So mm -hmm. it's really important to get rid of that stuff yeah and to get to get back to the core back to ourselves back to the truth i love so that that's yeah yeah so uh, this is a great um, conversation i am i would love to to come back though so you started to get answers because you were you were doing design you had your sixth child you've been told yeah it's time to do something else exactly. so what happened <laughs> So what happened was that that day when I asked, show me, three yeah. people came to ask me for advice. Mm -hmm. One person was at the park and needed the bathroom. So they came to knock on the door, kid, whatever. Came to knock on the door. And by the way, can you help me with this issue? I don't know what to do with my life. I'm supposed to go to school, but I don't know what to study. Blah, blah, blah. blah. Okay. Next person calls me on the phone. Can you ask me, uh, can you answer this question? I really need advice about this. I'm like, God, you want me to give advice? And then... You know, then that night, one of my friends walks in, knocks on the door, crying with a broken phone and says, hold my iPad. If my husband sees this, he'll break this too. And I was like, what? what's going on? Uh, and I realized, uh, I, I think God is telling me something. He's <laughs> like, one after the other, after the other, three in one day, this is a little bit much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so the next morning I turned to him like, you want me to advise people? Like, is that what you want me to do? And, you know, I told you, my mother was, was a rabbi's wife, yeah. a rabbitson. Everybody was coming to her for advice and she did it for free. So yeah. my biggest, my biggest hurdle next was I'm going to give advice for pay. Like that doesn't work. You can't do that. That's, that's not aligned or okay mm -hmm. wrong you know that's wrong <laughs> that was the you know that was the sound in my head it was like no 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 yeah um and i had to be coached through it you know i got this amazing money mindset coach debbie sasson yeah. who mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. was like you get to choose you get to choose what type of rebbitson you are there are rebbitsons who charge and rebbitsons who don't and I was like, no, but I have to help people. And she's like, try charging and seeing how the help is different. And she was right. The second somebody paid me 50 bucks, okay, that was all it took. I had a lady here who was crying. She was not willing to work with me without pay. So she, you know, she's like, I'm going to give you $50 and I'm going to work with you. The next day, the next day, her problem was gone. She walked out happy. She knew exactly what she was going to do. She had her action steps ready. She implemented 
within a week, her son was not doing dangerous things anymore. Somehow, surprise, surprise. And it was, you know, the whole turnaround of like, what are you doing dangerous? And she was like, oh, I drive with my kids unbuckled. Like, I don't even put them in car seats. I don't even care. And I was like, well, then why are you surprised your son is doing dangerous things? You know, this is dangerous. And then you know what she says to me? Mm -hmm. I know it's dangerous because we already had a car accident and I already know, like, it's not even that other people mm -hmm. and it's not going to happen to me. She's like, it happened to me and I still don't do it. But let me get clear. What actually helped her to flip the switch on that was her investing in advice around it. Investing exactly. in herself and saying, I'm committing to shifting things. And she's the one who told yeah. me, you know, that's where yeah. that's where really good friends come in. If you're a good friend to someone, pay them. Yeah. You know, somebody says like, oh, mm. do you have a friend discount? The real thing is I'm your friend. I want to pay you more. You deserve yeah. more, right? Yeah. I need to pay you so that you could see the power that you have. This friend was like, listen, I tried solving this in many ways. Nobody can help, help my child. He does dangerous things all the time and they're obviously dangerous and he pays the price and he knows it's dangerous. I cannot figure it out. I am willing to pay you to help me because she knows, she knows we're sitting in the park talking all the time. She knows what I could do. And it worked. And when I saw it worked and I saw how invested she was and I saw how, like how committed she was to actually mm -hmm. getting the value up her yeah. $50, right? Sadly. Like, how can I pay $50 yeah. without? I'm just going to pause you right there because um, there's a very good chance that some of the people listening to us, whether you're listening live or on the replay, that some of you out there are coaches or in that space. And so this is something that is, um, this is brought, there, there are so many people in, whether it's coach, professional services, so many people get stuck on this, um, paying and how much do I charge? And at the end of the day, it comes down to a few things. It comes down to our money blocks, like that Hen has been sharing about, about it's not okay to pay. And that actually comes down to our beliefs about the person who we're advising and their capacity. If we don't believe in their capacity to pay, <laughs> What's, what 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 energy are we coaching around, right? And the other oh side God. of it is it's our belief in our own value. So if we're saying to people, yeah, yeah, I'll give you a discount or um, I'll give you a pro bono or whatever it is, aren't we telling them that actually our coaching is 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 not valuable? And something that I've seen again and again and again mentoring coaches in my own business as well is that people will gain more value the more that they pay because then they value it more and they actually will follow through and they will actually show up in the coaching and they'll actually be prepared to go to that place where the transformation is and they will get the accelerated results. And you saw that in, that, like, in the space of a not week. Only that, doing that behavior, not right? only that, after, yeah. after that happened, you know, mm -hmm. and that was a conversation with the coach for free. Mm -hmm. Like that was my discovery mm -hmm. call was like, I don't know how I'm going to pay. She says, you get to choose. I got to choose. I got mm -hmm. results. I went back to her and paid her the full amount up front. Yeah. Well, there's a whole story behind it. I didn't have any money. We were poor. I prayed to God. I ended up getting a job that paid for it. It was really amazing. Anyway. It's nice when God wants, up, isn't it? When you, yes, when, you ask. when God wants something, <laughs> he can do it. Believe me. He is yeah. limitless. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of the things is like, Stop trying to control it. Just be really clear on what you need. Mm -hmm. As soon as I paid her full price for her coaching, mm -hmm. I was on my way. I yeah. cannot explain to you how quickly I grew as an influencer, as a leader, as, you know, as myself. I became who I am because I was so clear on the fact that if I cannot invest in myself in order to grow, then I can't have other people investing in themselves. You know, it's so big. And then I continue investing all the time because now I'm very clear on the fact that when you need something and when you find something that really works for you, you should do it. Yeah, and I love, absolutely. you know, I had one coach, I, I had one coach, Eva, Eva Palakova. She said, you make decisions based on where you want to be and not based on where you are now. 
hundred percent. And Allow there are the the magic of flowing fast and furious here. So um, you know, as as well for those listening, I know for the, many of our followers in the states, it's the middle of the night. So <laughs> there'll be a few on the replay as well. Hashtag replay. Oh, sorry. Hashtag nugget. Let us know what gems you're getting because there's a really powerful one there as well, which is about the power of investing in yourself. If we want others to invest in us, we need to invest in ourselves as well. And another yes. beautiful one. You no, know, but not is, only that, not yeah. only that, it's because you will experience the transformation exactly. and then you will be able to see it on others. You can't see exactly. what you can't, what you don't have, right? You yeah. have to be able to get through that. And it's a process that you're going to grow through, right? Yeah. And then you can take others through. A hundred percent. And that's where leaning into the person you're becoming, not the person you've been, is absolutely magical. And that's what leadership is, right? It's giving others not just the permission slip, but that belief and that is, as a coach, part of that is allowing others to believe in their own capacity and capability. And what you're sharing here is like, it's like the recipe, the formula. So for <laughs> those watching yes, it yes. down, this will change your and life. Let me just, yeah. let me just close Please. up the circle yeah. for you with my story. Cause yeah. you know, I know you want it. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, the marriage. Right. So yeah. once I realized I had to do advising, Mm -hmm. I then used my own advice on myself as a graphic designer. Here I was telling people, you have to niche down, you have to niche down. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, yeah, and you're going to advise what, you know? And so I had to niche down and it was really hard. It's really yeah. hard. You know, here yeah. when I was advising other people, I'm like, come on, let go, just do it. But it was very hard. And I, I asked myself, who are the people I love hanging around with? It was the mm -hmm. women in business. It was mm -hmm. those networking groups. It mm -hmm. was the women I saw when I was networking in all those conferences and running their lives and doing all their things and trying to grow businesses. And the biggest pain point was the thing I had to go through myself, which was my husband's holding me back. My husband's the reason why I can't grow. Now, can I ask you a question? And you may be coming mm -hmm. to this, but I think this, this, is, this is a really interesting one. Was your husband really holding you back? No. Hmm. Absolutely not. You know how I know? Because mm -hmm. he didn't change. I changed. <laughs> he did nothing. I, that magic, right? Yeah, I did yeah. not. You know, I told him, I, I because I'm a very open person and, and my marriage is top priority for me, and I was feeling so down and so low. If you read some of my journal entries then, it was like, okay. Yeah. It was bad. I was upset with him. I was annoyed. I was resentful. I was doing all the things that you do when you feel this way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I finally was like, it's your fault. You're going to feel guilty because you're a loser, and I – can't succeed too much because then you're going to feel bad about yourself, you know? And mm -hmm. obviously I wasn't telling him he was a loser, but he was telling me how he feels like a loser. So what a good wife does is she makes sure he doesn't feel like a loser. So she tries to make herself just as low or, you know, Oh, don't worry. I'm also not succeeding so well. It's fine. It's all good. But it was frustrating. It was annoying. And I finally ah. said it, you know, and it came out maybe in not the nicest way. Like, you're going to be jealous of me. And that's why. And he looks at me and says, if you make money, I'm going to be happy. Because your money and my money, they're in the same bank account. It doesn't really matter. And I was like, yeah, but you're going to have that feeling inside. right? Like all the beliefs I had about yeah. him. You're going to have this feeling inside. You're going to feel that I am, you know, blah, blah. And he's like, no. I don't care. I don't think that way. I'm not an emotional person like you. I just think logically, oh, there is more money. Money is fungible. It's all money, right? Mm -hmm. He's so logical. Like I'm the artist. He's the scientist. It's very like in the yeah. box, square, computer, yeah. everything. And in his mind, he knows time without looking at time. He can count he could tell you how much the shopping is going to come out before she even runs the stuff through. And he's always on the dot. 
I don't know how he does it, but he has a computer in his head. So I'm really not kidding when I say he's very computerized and I'm very not. This is one of our biggest issues, right? When I have no concept of time and he is counting time in his head. Right, right, right. Very, very big problem. Um, But here he was looking at me like, huh? You know, what do you want from me? I, I did nothing to you. And I st- I break down. I broke down and I started crying. I was like, so why? Why have I been holding myself back? And he's like, I don't know. Do you need some help? I'm like, yes. You know what help I need? I hate making supper. I hate <laughs> 6 o'clock. 6 p.m. comes and I hate Not it. Alone. I can't. <laughs> I, you know, lack of time, right? It's 4 mm-hmm. o'clock. I'm like, oh, I know what I'm making. I know what we're having tonight. But then I turn around and it's 6 o'clock and I haven't even started on supper. And I knew what I was going to make, but it's not enough time. Yeah. And then I'm cranky. The kids are cranky. My husband's mm-hmm. looking at me like I'm a total loser because I couldn't get my act together. And I feel really bad every single night, except those nights that I plan ahead and push myself really hard. But willpower is not going to get you that far. No, especially not at that end of the day, right? It's kind of run right. out by then for most people. No. Yeah. So I said, you know how you can help me? You make all the suppers always from now on. I give up. <laughs> and I gave it up. And well it was the coolest experience. It, it was really hard to do because yeah. – Giving up suppers means that I had to deal now with the fact that I don't do suppers. And you know what that does? It makes all your friends be jealous of you. Oh, well, you can work because your husband helps you. Oh, well, you can blah, blah. Like, can you guys just chill? Right? So like, you suddenly have the voice, you, fa- right? you have this. You have to face all that garbage yeah. around. What does it mean about me? What does it mean about my mother? My motherhood? What does it mean about my, you know, my personality, my identity, my something? I don't know. It's like, guys, this is working for us, okay? You know, mm-hmm. like, leave me alone. It's really interesting, though, because that point that you raise, I know that affects a huge number of people, is this, if I do, and whether it's giving up suppers, whether it's whatever it is. Um, oh, you know, cleaning. We start people with, with a relationship problem. with that. Yeah. So we clear out the stuff that we have around our beliefs about what our husband, our spouse, our partner is, 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 is thinking or not thinking. And usually, okay, they're just our beliefs. How can we possibly know what that other person is thinking? And your story is just so, such a good demonstration of that. And then we do that. And then we've got other people's beliefs coming on us as well. And I know this affects a lot of people is that, well, it's not safe for me to stick my head up because then I won't have any friends because they'll all be jealous or think this about me or whatever it is. And so, usually it comes from the closest people to you. Mm-hmm, usually mm-hmm. it's your mother-in-law. Why are you making my why are you making my son why do all the suppers? suppers? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank God my thank God my mother-in-law is amazing. And yeah. she she is not that type. But we have, yeah. you know, I really have a big a big section um yeah. in my in my programs about how to deal with the oh, closest bitch. people to you, your parents, your in-laws, yeah. your siblings, your children. That it affects your marriage so much. You have to yeah. deal with it. And I'll so ask you really actually important. to t- tell people a bit more because it does. It doesn't just affect your marriage. It affects, um, well, my observation with people I've worked with, everything. It affects oh, your yeah. self-image. It affects your self-worth. It affects your business. It affects your health and your stress levels. It re- affects how you parent your children. It affects your relationship. The and that's package. why I chose. Mm. that's why I chose marriage. Because I told my coach, I want to, I can help them with anything. I can help them with anything. Why would I tell them that I can only help them with one thing if I can help them with anything? She's like, what is the thing that if you fix that, everything else will be fixed? And I was like, marriage. When yeah. your marriage is wonky, when something is not aligned, when something doesn't mm-hmm. feel right, oh, everything feels wrong. Your yeah. business, your work, your children, your in-laws, your everybody, everything feels off when your marriage is off. Yeah. And if I can fix the marriage, you know, which I see it all the time, you know, it's mm-hmm. amazing. It's like you just click it back into place and things start to flow. 
And then suddenly there's more money. And usually he starts making more money when you work on yourself. It's the coolest thing. It is one of the, I can't even say guarantee because it's not mine. I can't guarantee it. But the rate at which my women say, oh, actually my husband got a really great job or my husband got a great client. <laughs> Love it. You know, suddenly my husband's not a loser anymore. Suddenly he's doing the thing he's meant to do. It's like, why do you think that is? Because you finally let go. You know, yeah. you're finally like, we have our claws on them. We're like, I'm going to help you succeed. And it's like, no, mm -hmm. he's, he can do it. Just like you can do it, he can do it. And the more you invest in yourself, the boundaries, the ability to hold your own space, your ability to really climb and grow and fly and shine it's contagious yeah it's That's contagious thing, isn't it? yeah it's so beautiful and you know one of the ladies said i have the money but i'm i'm going to invest it in my husband getting help because he needs the help more than i do and i said to her let's just say your husband gets the help with this money right great so now he's like helped if you get the help with the money, then he's helped. Your kids are helped. Your everything is helped. Like everything is helped. It just spills over, right? Because that's the, 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 the nature of women is when we grow, we grow like everybody grows with us because they're yeah. all attached to us. Like we're like yeah. that piece of the chain everybody is attached yeah. to. Yeah, and it all starts with the inner work. That's the beautiful thing. So many people get fixated on trying to fix things in the way people are behaving and the things people are doing and how we allocate the chores or all the stuff on the outside. And if we haven't fixed that stuff on the inside, that's just going to implode. So I love what you're doing there. Um, oh, my gosh, I've been picking, picking up so many nuggets. Let me just recap. So you sound like an amazingly intentional person, even more so. But you started out with this amazing graphic design career. You moved to Israel after you got married and started having your family, expanded that, had this incredibly amazing graphic design career in Jerusalem, started your own business, and you just saw this passion that 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 the women in business you, you were networking with just keep bumping up against their own beliefs about, I can't be too successful because if I am, right? Right. And, and that intersection, yeah. right? The intersection between marriage and business yeah. was such a rich place to stand yeah. because I could help them with both, right? Like mm -hmm. here I am, I have all this knowledge in the graphic design, the branding, the targeting, mm -hmm. the marketing. And on the other hand, I have all this amazing tools and skills that I can help them with their marriage. And I'm sitting there at the intersection going, so am I a marriage coach or a business coach? Because I'm giving them advice on both, um, um, right? And I'm like, why do I have to choose? And yeah. that's when I realized, just like you don't have to choose between your marriage and your business, right? You guys don't have to choose either. Like, yeah. we think that it's either I grow my business and make millions, and then I pay a price, which, by the way, I've seen so many people go down that road, which is so painful to watch, mm -hmm. right? And so that even solidifies the fear of like, oh, I'm not going to do it. No, I don't want to go there. You know, when I talk to people, I was like, I don't want to make millions. I just want a little more. Just a, just a little, tiny little, <laughs> right? Like, I just don't want to be poor anymore, right? And then it's like, I just want to make a little bit more so I could have a car. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. Yeah. Hey, could you just stop it? Like, whew, open yourself up. Yeah. And, yeah. Or, you know, the other price is even higher, by the way. Or you have these people who say, I have to stick with my marriage. It's my top priority. I'm going to not do my passion until my kids grow up, until my husband retires, until I don't know what, right? <laughs> we used to say until COVID's over, but we don't even know when that is. Yeah. So forget about that, right? It's like, that was very fuzzy. We're going to leave never that happens. on the side. Never yeah. happens, Jen. Yeah. And then, and happens, then it's not too old. You're right. And then what happens is that you end up this awful, resentful, mm -hmm. mean, angry, icky, sad, depressed person because you're not in your purpose. You're not doing the thing that lights you up. So 
everybody is paying a price, not only yeah. you, but everyone around you. Your husband's not happy with an unhappy wife. And then you're like, yeah, but you should be happy because I'm giving everything up for you. I, I made like, the second oh. question for you. And he's going, I never asked. Exactly. Asking, yeah, how many conversations and the kids, have you had? And the <laughs> kids, what are, we, what are we teaching our kids when we say, I am staying home for you, yeah. right? So I'm not doing my thing because of you. First of all, that's really like, ooh, kids want to just run away from that, right? Because yeah. it feels really heavy to carry that as a child. It's too much. And then they end up carrying and, it into adulthood too. Of yeah. course. And when I work, when my kids work, you know, now that COVID happened mm -hmm. and my kids actually found out what I do, because <laughs> it's like they never really knew because they go to school and I work from home and then they come home and yeah. they don't know. They were we were all in the same house. They started hearing what I'm saying. And it was such a beautiful conversation that came up. And the way that they were making fun of me was just very cute. You know, one of my daughters, I think she's eight, she put on the headscarf. She stands in front of the mirror and she's like, and we're live, you know? And that's how I, <laughs> that's how I start all my lives is like, and we're live. And so she does the same thing with the hand motion and the scarf and she's talking to the mirror. Now you have to understand this is the one kid who did not speak English. She refused to speak English, mm -hmm. but she gave the entire live podcast to the mirror, right? That's In English. Yeah. Yeah. It's so beautiful. They're seeing that you can have it all you can do what you're doing it doesn't mean you have to stop doing something because something else yeah exactly and it does come down that's a huge thing for us as parents and this is something for mums and dads is how is how i'm what is the way i'm showing up in life teaching my children about what's possible for them exactly right. it's so beautiful um, and about their worth as well it, it, it comes down so much to that so wow we have covered a huge huge amount and i just want to from everything that we've talked and everything that you've learned through your own journey and through the clients that you've worked with as well we've drawn out already so many amazing little gold nugget gems of wisdom that that are life-changing um but i just want to ask you you know, is, is there anything else in terms of insights or light bulbs that you'd like to share with, with people who are listening that you've learned in your journey? Yeah. So as I said, you can have it all. The question yeah. is, is the all the things that are important to you or to other people, right? Because yeah. when people think, oh, I can't have it all, it's because it's all these things that don't really matter to you. Like, I can't have a pool in my front yard. You know why? Not because I don't have the money, but because I don't want to take the responsibility of owning a pool in a mm -hmm. town where children, like, you know, quadruple the amount of adults here. Like, there's mm -hmm. children roaming everywhere. Thank God. So I should have a pool, right? So that's, that's mm -hmm. something that if you ask me, oh, you can have it all. I'm like, I could, but... I don't actually want some of those things. Like there are things that aren't on my to-do list, right? Mm -hmm. But the things that are important to me, I can have and I can have them all. And mm -hmm. I don't have to give up something for something else. And you know why? Because here's the thing, when I'm in alignment, mm -hmm. I think of it as a periscope, right? You have a submarine and a periscope comes out and it's looking to the sides and it's checking and it's looking and it's checking. And we do this a lot. We look for external, right? Mm -hmm. We're looking to see what other people need and want and whatever, right? And it's like, I want this and I want that, but I, but if I'm looking this way, I can't have that. And if I'm looking this way, I can't have that, right? And it's like, mm -hmm. anywhere you turn, you're very limited to where you're turning. And then if you just turn up and adjust your angle, you can have everything flow in yeah. because that's the power of turning to god the limitless the one that doesn't have different angles or different you know limitations it's just everything yeah. so if i am here right i turn to god and i say if i'm here to serve you and i'm meant to serve this amount of people or whoever comes to me or whatever it is then bring them to me and let me serve them. I, I can't do, you know, I can't run after people. And, you know, some of these like strategies, 
my strategy is let it be easy by connecting to God. But some of these strategies have you so exhausted, yeah. write messages to every single person, every single thing, and, blah, 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 and run after people and meet everyone under the sun. You think I could do that with seven kids? No. I can't. I know people, I've got, I, oh. I've got two, and I still say that's far too much. And, and this is this exactly. is, I to ask a question about that because I know there's people listening who just have been counting and listening to the numbers, and there he is, just pricked up and went, she's got how many kids? Seven, yeah. Right. And so I had, I had baby number. Yeah. yeah. He's exactly, he's exactly a year. I oh, had God. baby number seven oh, at the God. height of my, you know, growing my business. and that was the coolest part that was yeah. the coolest thing to actually see that i can have a baby and launch a podcast on the same week right that was like wow that was pretty yeah. cool and that's what I'm I'm talking about. You can have it all. there are probably some people now who are going yeah okay that's all right for here but there's no way that could be possible for me what what was it, if you could name one thing that helped you make that possible? You had your periscope pointing up and you were open to receive. What's one other thing that, that you'd say, actually, this really made a difference for me to be able to go through that, having baby number seven, and be able to launch my podcast? So the step one of my call method is yeah. connect to yourself. I have my call method is four letters, calm. I'm going to ask you to, that, to, to tell us about that in a sec, that actually, because you've got something okay. coming up that's all about it, haven't you? Yeah, um, yeah. marriage. The marriage breakthrough retreat is starting cool. on Monday. Cool. Um, the call method is connect to yourself, ask for abundance, listen for the answer, and master a higher level of consciousness. That is but cool. step one, step one is connect to yourself, and I think the hardest thing for me especially, I, I'm sure other people can relate, is getting really honest about what you really mm. want. And all you want a whole earth and expensive mm. and crazy. And, you know, who has, who pays really, really high price for something you can get free at the hospital? Like, that's what people mm. like, But when you go to the hospital, you get free diapers. And, you know, wow. I was like, whoa. Mm. It shook me to thinking, wait, am I making the decisions because of, you know, my decisions about where I am? Because I want to be. Mm -hmm. Where I want to be, and when I got really clear with myself, was I want to have another baby. I want to have a home birth, right? And my husband was a paramedic, so it was very hard to get him to my side of the of the deal. Yeah. But thank God for COVID. And COVID came right in time for for me to prove to him that there was absolutely no way I was going was into a hospital. lining to COVID. There you go. I, I, God works in mysterious ways. Absolutely. So, yeah, yeah. You know, I was growing my business while I was pregnant. Then I had a baby in the house. I stayed home after and I had the most amazing experience, right? Of course, everything fell into place after I got in touch with what I wanted. But I could not have had any of that if I didn't actually sit down and listen to my own gut. What do I want? Not what other people want for me. Other people wanted me to go to the hospital and to have a great three days of rest. That does not feel like rest to me. Sorry, I'd rather be with my kids at home in their environment. They they were great. They left me alone. I had, you know, silence. I, I was sleeping. Nice. I had, it was really great because I was really clear about what I wanted. And then I was able to, of course, you know, communicate it and get the support for it and actually make it happen. But that's the, that's the easy part. The hardest part is to ask yourself with all honesty, what do I want? What do I really want? What am I willing to actually say I want, right? I once had a podcast guest who said, dare to declare, like actually be willing to say, this is what I want. It's so hard. Yeah. Yeah, and that, that is something for everybody, everyone on the face of the planet, that is huge, because it's getting, it's allowing ourselves 
getting out of our own way to give ourselves permission to even ask that question and permission to let go of all of the shoulds, not letting people, other people should all over you, We're not no. shooting all over ourselves, right? Actually being honest, what do I really, really want? And connecting with it, allowing ourselves yeah. to tip the periscope up and, and receive. Yeah. So can you just run us through the calm, the steps? So calm is connect with myself. A is ask for abundance. L is? Listen for the answer. Beautiful. And M? You know why. Yeah. M, master a higher level of consciousness. Consciousness, yeah. The listen for you the know, answer. You I know, can, I can connect to myself and then I can connect to God and say, if this is the, you know, if this is really true and right for me, mm. then show me how, help me, guide me, right? Yeah. That's where I ask. And a lot of us are very good at that, especially if you grew up with asking. Mm -hmm. Most people can ask. They get really good at asking even. Mm -hmm. You know, people are expert prayers, right? Mm -hmm. I have yeah. friends <laughs> who just stand there in prayer and ask and ask and ask, especially when mm -hmm. we were dating. Everybody was always asking, asking. Oh, I want to yeah. get the, you know, the best guy for me. Mm. Or when, you know, when people need a help with money, it's like, you, you mm. know, you have to ask. But here is the hardest part to actually link the dots. Yeah. You know, put, put the answers together with the questions. Yeah. When, when you pray, you close your prayer book, you, you know, you get up, start your day, whatever it is. Your day starts happening, right? Reality hits and you turn around and be like, oh, that was interesting. Somebody asked me for advice. Okay. Oh, that was interesting. Somebody else asked me for, okay. Okay. Yeah. And you don't put it together. Sometimes it takes you a couple of days to realize, wait, I think that's what I just prayed for. Like, yeah, because it shows what? up in all sorts of ways, right? And not always putting at the same the, time. Putting one plus one mm. together and being mm. able to say, oh, that's the answer. That's really important. Yeah. yeah and when you're is. attentive to it, then you start seeing it. And then you start, that's when you start seeing miracles, right? Because you have people yeah. telling you like, oh my gosh, I asked. And suddenly I had a client who told her husband, I really want this program, but I can't afford it. So he said, okay, what do you want me to do? So she's like, well, we, we need to pray. We need to ask. That's what she said to do and just let it in. So he's like, okay. And she's like, and she said to let it be easy. So he's like, okay, right? This was a really sweet guy. He really wanted his wife to be happy, but he had no idea what she wanted from him. They went to sleep that night. And then in the morning, they get an email with a payment from someone who owed them money. <laughs> exactly. What? So yeah. he turns to her, he turns to her and says, Okay, I think this is the program for you. <laughs> no, that's brilliant. Right? Because and the thing is that stuff happens all the time if we allow ourselves to notice it. It's it's very interesting. You say it's it's um about allowing yourself to be attentive to it, and it's almost like training a muscle. Have you found that actually? Yes. Um, practicing so that we, or like learning to walk, maybe is a better example, so that we get good at it. I find with with people I'm working with, often if they keep just a little journal of all of those little magic synchronicities or whatever you want to call them, gifts from God, um, because they're happening in our lives all the time, all the time, and most of it, most of the time we don't notice, but the more we start just just picking it up and making a note and oh, this one and this one and this one, the more we start allowing it in. Have you noticed that? Of course. Yeah. First thing is I have a training on journaling. Because Brilliant. once I started journaling, I'm already in book nine. Like I yeah. can't stop, <laughs> right? And there's so the many thing benefits. That, yeah. That, yes, there's so many benefits. But the thing mm -hmm. that holds everybody back from mm -hmm. it is perfectionism. Right. From what yeah. I found. Yeah. It has yeah. to be perfect. I have to do it every day. It has to be a certain mm -hmm. thing. It has to be in good handwriting. It has to look pretty. It, you know, I don't know what everything under the sun. There are mm -hmm. reasons and reasons why you do not start because it just won't work. I have to have and, a perfect book. That's one that comes up a lot. Exactly. Yeah. And the perfect pen mm -hmm. and the perfect time mm -hmm. and the perfect place. <laughs> like mm -hmm. it's all about perfectionism. It's all, it's like 
that is exactly the root of the problem of why you don't start journaling. Yeah. And so my whole training is how to let it be easy. Just do it when you feel like it. Take notes in it. You know, yeah. keep everything in one place. Just wow. And I'm just going to say, in. everyone listening is getting so much good juicy stuff here. But I will wrap up because um, we've covered so much stuff, and I know that you have you have the retreat coming up next week. And I just want to save the, our last couple of minutes so you can tell everyone about it. Um, and I'm going to be really open. Every, I'm I'm going <laughs> because there's just so much, so much good stuff, and this is just so relevant to all of us. Yes. And the sense that I get is that we're talking about relationships and at the, the very first relationship we're talking about is the relationship with ourselves, which is at the center of everything and our relationships, our relationship with spirit, with God, with, with, you know, what binds us all together as human beings. And I'm not sure if there's anything more important than that. And that then working out from that, we've got marriage, we've got relationships with, with, with the rest of our family and our business and all of that other stuff. But getting that centerpiece really solid and clearing out of the way the stuff that's that's holding us back from those really, really core relationships is at the heart of so much. So this is something that's, I think, relevant to humans. <laughs> that's just my perspective. Now, I'd just like to invite you to, it. maybe I've, I, I, you, you're probably sitting there going, huh. Oh. Tell us a little no, bit about I, I love it. First of all, I love listening to you speak. I think that yeah. you have a way of, there's something so warm about the way you speak and about the way you wrap everything up nicely with a bow. And you, it, I, it's just such a pleasure. You're so great. <laughs> well, you're welcome to I'm, come back anytime. <laughs> <laughs> sure, I will. Um, I'm very, you know, bouncy, happy and like, all, you know, very practical, but very, let's get moving. And you're like, okay, let's take a deep breath. I love it. Um, so the marriage breakthrough retreat yeah. is the freebie that I ended up falling in love with, mm -hmm. right? Like mm -hmm. you, you start your business, you have all these different things you get for free. So there's like, you know, the five surprising ways to improve your marriage and the thing to find clarity and all these different things that I came up with. But my favorite one was this marriage breakthrough retreat. And really it's because it's an entire experience. It's like mm. a course or I don't know, like it, it's, it's a, it's substantial. Right. And that's why I love it so much. I didn't like giving people a taste of something. It's like, here, taste my cake. Okay, now if you want it, you got to, you know, buy it. It just felt so, ooh, not, not an integrity at all with who I am. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wanted to have an entire product that was, here, let me show you how to break through your marriage from A to Z, no strings attached. And then you like it? Great. Keep working with me. I have masterminds. You can join. But they have, they they, you will come out satiated and full and completely ready to take on your marriage and break through just by going through the retreat, which is why I ended up sticking with it. And just, I keep doing it because it is so satisfying to feed people, right? That's the biggest yeah. satisfaction is like, as a mother, you're like, I made food. Everyone ate. They all said it was delicious, right? This is I amazing. You can't, exactly. You can't feel more amazing than that. So in order for me to feel amazing, I give it all for free. I love it. And, yeah. and then afterwards, you know, I have my things. I make my money. Don't worry. But it's really important for me to do that. So the Marriage Breakthrough Retreat is a seven day, mm -hmm. uh, one hour a day on Zoom. And basically it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So the first four days are the calm method. So the first mm -hmm. day is connect to yourself. Second day is, you know, the God baggage, ask, ask for abundance. Third day is listen for the answer. Fourth day, master a higher level of consciousness. And then we take a break for Friday and Saturday. First mm -hmm. of all, because all these challenges I've done, and I love these types of things. I take a lot of, you know, great things from other people and, I try to better myself all the time. Yeah. They're exhausting. Yeah. You actually, in that hour, you do so much inner work. You need to settle it down. You need to just yeah. breathe it in. You need to allow it to settle. Right. 
And I want to be there with you through that settling as well. So I give you two days to just take a breather. And then we go back Sunday, Monday, Tuesday for Sunday is intimacy and mm -hmm. enhance your intimacy. Monday is design the atmosphere in your home because those are the top, yeah. the top biggest things that come up when people say these are my challenges. And the, the last day, Tuesday, is re really bringing it all together, wrapping it up, asking you know questions and answers, being able to walk out on your feet in the right direction. Here's the thing. I'm really into independence. I mm -hmm. want to foster independence in people. Like you were saying, if you don't believe they can pay, then what does that make you, right? It doesn't make you a very <laughs> like good coach. You have to yeah. believe in your people just as much as you believe in yourself and in your product. Those are the three beliefs that have to happen in order for you to yeah. succeed. So I want to put my friends, my people, my clients, I want to put them on their feet. I want to show them the right direction. I want to give them the little push and I want to mm -hmm. watch them, right? Do it, go, fly, thrive, grow. And, yeah. and that's something that, is so is so satisfying to watch yeah and it's really important for me not to make them dependent there's a lot of leaders i found who are like stick with me forever and you won't ever have to blah blah it's like yeah but what happens when i let go for a second what happens when i have a life what happens when i'm not attached do i lose everything do i not continue mm -hmm. to be in flow i just it's not my thing it's yeah. like maybe it works for other people but I love that. because you're allowing to... people to grow and it's it's kind of like saying to the kids don't you ever leave home like, yeah really? exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> i think now, i think we all lose <laughs> yeah now you've got a, a sign up link for the retreat so for anyone who's watching who goes actually now there will be some people who are going oh but i might have some things in my schedule next week so do they have to the, do we have to be there live for zoom how does it work if it's not the right time zone or okay so there is definitely replays they're sent out pretty soon after we're done um and you can watch the replay mm -hmm. and you can come to just one day and yep. gain so much because each day stands on its own because mm. each day is its own training, but nice. they flow into each other so perfectly. So yes, you can, you know, you should, if you want to stick with shoulds, you know, it was designed for you to take from beginning to end and really create a breakthrough. If you decide that you can't have it all, then mm -hmm. next best thing is be a perfectionist and say, okay, well, if I can't have it all, then I won't do any of it. And then close the computer and move on. But actually, no, that's not true. I was kidding. Um, don't be a perfectionist. Take what you can. Come you to see, day one. Think about the buffet. And that's the image that I'm having is you're offering people a buffet and it's got every single course there. And so you can have a little bit of every course from your appetizers right through to dessert and the coffee and the tea. Or people can go up. Oh, well, I've I've just got the appetite this week for a couple of couple of pieces. I'll just have the entree and the main things. And right. and you're saying that's okay. You'll still benefit. Oh, of course. Mm -hmm. you, first of all, you will, you will, you need whatever you need to hear. You will hear. Exactly. And that's about life in general. Yeah. God will send you whatever you need to hear. So maybe it was enough for you to watch the podcast, and you're like, "Whoa, I got so much out of it. I'm going to go implement." And mm -hmm. go ahead. Bye. Right. Or you could show up to day one and be like, wow, it was mind blowing. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. But I, mm -hmm. I have work tomorrow or something. Right. Fine. Whatever you're not at, don't feel bad about. There's no FOMO because it must have been that you're not meant to be there. Just move on. No. Right. That whatever and happens, you can, be perfect. Yeah, exactly. You can always no. go back and listen. You can pick and choose. You, you know, I have people one of the things I offer in my retreat is a 15 minute call with me. Oh, cool. Um, one on one. Yeah, it's very cool. Uh, it's a whole breakthrough. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Yeah. Um, yeah. A one on one with me is really powerful and it's very expensive. So if I'm offering 15 minutes free, people will sign up for the retreat just so they can sign up for the implementation. So I call. just want to be clear that people listening are getting that is that um, 
they're getting five hours of Zoom calls. Seven. If they can't make it live, seven. They're getting actually a week and a half because they're getting four, two days of break and percolation and take a breather. And then they're getting the other three. So that's when you add it up, what, that's nine days yes. of the retreat. And they're getting a 15-minute call with you. Yes. And a workbook. And, yeah, there's a lot of great stuff. <laughs> Did you, did you catch all of that? If, if all of the nuggets that we've just been downloading in the past hour, and it's, and, it's, and it's not just about marriage, it's about the whole of life. It's about business. It's about how to manifest the things that you want. It's about how to be connected with your true self and be clear about you want what you want and, and not the stuff that other people are, you know, wanting for you is a much nicer way of saying it than what mm -hmm. I often say. And... And that is your freebie, which says a lot for what happens in your masterclasses. Oh, so yes, I'm, it does. I'm that. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yes, it I'm, does. So I, I, I caught before that it's your son's first birthday today. Is that right? It's, it's uh, yeah, yeah, it's in, yeah, it's around now. Yeah. It's around yeah, now. I think it's in two wow. days. Uh, soon. Right. Okay. So I will, I will let you get back to him because he's probably around soon. But, he's um, sleeping. I am very yeah, proud of him. Yeah. He is doing so well. He must he must know there's important stuff going on. I do want to ask you, though, before we wrap up, because, gosh, we've covered a lot of ground. I love this. Is there, um, thinking back over everything we've talked about and over everything that you've seen in your own journey and working with clients, what's, what's one thing that we haven't yet touched on that you would love to share with the people listening? I, I think that, you know, you're all about time management mm. and it's always, it feels like it's always about what else can I do? What can I add? What can mm. I, you know, and sometimes it's about taking the break and resting yeah. and listening and, you know, just going back to yourself and making some room. When I tell people there's a retreat and every single day, it's an hour of, you know, mind blown, right? It's like, yeah, but I'm so busy. I have so much to do. I can't, I can't, I can't. And I stop, stop. It's very similar to how I felt when I got that big client and I suddenly got that much money and I was like, but we're poor. I should put it into the big mm -hmm. hole that is, you know, sucking us in. And the, the, the high level decision I made right? That intentionality that I was able to have in that moment and say, a part of this, you know, can go for whatever we need. Obviously, I didn't leave us poor, but a big chunk is going to go into getting out of this, right? Yeah. Like, I am not staying here anymore. So making that, carving out that space, carving out the money, mm -hmm. carving out the time, the intention about how do I get out of this, right? Because yes, you're always going to be busy and you're always going to feel down and you're always going to, right? If you don't get out of there, that's where you're going to live. That's what you're going to be playing with. That's what's going to be consuming that. you. Mm -hmm. And you Take put it beautifully time. before, am I leaning into the person I choose to be that I want to become or am I leaning into the essentially the person I am now, which is the habits that I've brought forward from the past. Which one do I want? Right. So I know that our listeners are probably have, have one burning question that, that what you just shared will have prompted. You've got, you're running a business, a successful business, coaching and advising others and doing all of this stuff. And you have seven children, um, some of whom are still preschoolers, one of whom is just about to turn one. Are there times that sometimes you find that you have a bit of an energy slump ever? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what's your favorite go-to when that happens? What's your favorite go-to that helps you get your energy back so that you can show up as the person you choose to be? Okay, I love you so much. Show up to day one because that is what day one is all about. <laughs> there you go, good. <laughs> we actually, we create the list of things to turn to. And nice. I have a list of, I think, 41 things on my computer. Beautiful. Yeah. And I it's linked according to, is it time consuming? Is it money thing? Is mm -hmm. it with what, it like includes water? Mm -hmm. There, it's categorized, right? It's, I love it. it at any moment what am i going to take from this list to get me out of this slump so yeah. 
you know, sometimes it's go take a nap, take a shower, yeah. drink mm -hmm. water. Sometimes it's go outside, get out, go to the park mm -hmm. with the kids, let them run around and stop trying to control everything. Mm -hmm. Right. Sometimes it's do some art because I am an yeah. artist. And yeah. so it brings me alive. It helps me process. It gets whatever is in my yeah. head out on paper. There's so much. And when I am really clear, when I'm connected to myself and I can, in a moment of calm mm -hmm. in a retreat where I actually stop everything and focus, I'm able to make this list ahead of time, then it's so much easier to then turn to it and say, yeah. okay, energy slump, we yeah. are having a bad day, <laughs> right? And I just yeah. had two very difficult days where I was like so all over the place. My brain was not not functioning the way I wanted to. It's like I, I was late to pick up, you know, my daughter from mm -hmm. preschool. Mm -hmm. and that was really bad. Like you feel so guilty about yourself. You're like, oh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and all these other things were going wrong, right? And I just had to stop and say, okay, what from the list am I doing right now? Because mm -hmm. this cannot continue. Like we cannot keep going like this, right? So for me, there's, you know, I have a whole day one of the workbook. I love it. All of it. I'm looking forward to that. And it's pre-planning. What you've done, yes. you pre-plan, plan it in advance so I don't have to think about it in the moment. I love my favorite quote. My favorite mm -hmm. quote, if you fail to plan, you plan you to fail. You plan to fail. <laughs> you start, that's, a nice, that's a really nice note for us to end on. And the planning actually starts with connecting with who we are, knowing how to ask for that abundance, practicing listening to let it in and mastering a higher state of consciousness starts with that right yeah there yeah. it is beautiful i love it this nice simple practical recipe so for all of those of you listening catch that we've got it going across the bottom if you if you want to just sample the buffet connectedforreal.com forward slash retreat it's a free retreat, and my goodness, there is just so much on the menu for this one. And um, this is going to help not just your relationships, but your entire life. Because once we get aligned with that relationship with ourselves internally, everything else is better, not just our marriages. So awesome. Very much looking forward to that. Thank you so much for coming on and for this very, very rich conversation. But, Ken, it's uh, been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. You're awesome. Yeah. Yeah, so are you. <laughs> what a lovely note to end it on. Thank you to everyone who's joined us with the live or on the replay. Again, just drop us um, hashtag live, hashtag replay to let us know and let us know where you're listening from. But most of all, I would love to hear what your number one kind of takeaway is from this conversation because we have covered so much. I'd love to know what your biggest aha is. Thanks again for joining us. Thank you, Bakken, for your time. Um, say hello to your gorgeous little boy for us. <laughs> he is absolutely Thank and, you. He's the only one I've met so far, but there we go. And <laughs> I will sign off now. I'm just going to end our stream. Thank you, everyone. You have a wonderful rest of your day, afternoon, Thank evening, you. wherever you are. See ya.